Good morning, Wesley. It is so good to be with you tonight. Is that a little, a little loud? Hot mic this morning. It's hot outside. It's offensively hot outside. That's how I describe it. I walk outside and I am offended. I am offended. Whether you offend me. <laughs> um, we have so much going on in the life of our church that we take a few moments at the beginning. If you're a guest or, or maybe you haven't been here in a while, we take a, a moment to go over all the great opportunities that you can get involved with here at Wesley. And tonight, um, in the parking lot, pickleball. If you want to learn how to play uh, or you know how to play, there's equipment available as well. And uh, the cost is only $100 per player. <laughs> now it's free. Uh, we have the, our school drive going on from, until August 13th, so pick up a school supply list in the foyer, drop donations in the sanctuary foyer or the church office. For more information, contact Chelsea, and I believe all of these are also in uh, your bulletin, or most of these are in your bulletin, but you know, we have to hear it three times for it to sink in. That's the way it is with us humans. Wow, Women of Wesley, August 8th, they're writing cards for teachers, and uh, there'll be some prayers probably attached to those cards because we know that you are starting school, and we know it's your favorite time of year. <laughs> okay, security training, Wednesday, August 9th, 6 p.m. in Journey Classroom. All department heads are strongly encouraged to attend as well as Mother's Day Out employees. That's this Wednesday, 6 p.m. in the Journey Classroom. This coming Saturday, men have an opportunity to, uh, to fellowship and break bread together. Breakfast, 8 a.m. to 9.30 in the CLC. All men, young and old, are invited to attend. And next week, we have a special uh, day as well because it's the third grade Bible presentation and the blessing of the backpacks. Now, we don't really bless the backpacks, right? We bless those who wear the backpacks and, and also the teachers, administrators, staff like that. So it's a big day. And today, by the way, is also a big day because it's Promotion Sunday. So uh, that's, a, that's a really cool thing and a tradition that this church does. Uh, we have um, training next week for, uh, for communion. And I promise you this won't let, last more than five minutes. Um, it's at, it, it's directly following uh, this service. And if you are interested or have served communion, it, we're just going to serve it a different way next month. And so Denise France and I are going to show you how we're going to do that. It's real easy. And it might not even last five minutes. I promise it won't last more than five minutes, maybe six. But it won't last, won't last more than six. All right. Worship night next Sunday. That's next Sunday, a week from today, August 13th, 5 p.m. dinner, 6 p.m. worship. That's a great opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord. And uh, that is in here. Is that in here? That's in here. Yeah, dinner in the CLC and then in here. Uh, Mother's Day Out Open House, August 15th. Meet the teacher at 6 p.m. until question mark. And you know those parties are always awesome. Till question mark. <laughs> I, I could go on with that joke, but I'm going to stop. I got a lot. I got a lot going on here. August 19th, another mission day uh, led by Gary Richards. Uh, he is sitting down here in front. If you don't know Gary, you want to, um, you want to get to know Gary. But um, meet in the church parking lot at 7 a.m. That's August 19th. And bring any carpenter tools that you may have. Larger tools will be provided. And there'll be a, this will be a day of fellowship and meeting the needs of people in our mission field. And lunch is provided. And I'm told that we're getting a, um, I've prayed for a cold front. Uh, so, um, we'll see how that, we'll see how that turns out. We have blood, uh, life share blood drive, August 20th, 830 to one wacky Wednesday starts back September 13th. Keep that on your calendar. Yes. Wacky Wednesday grief support Wednesday is beginning September 13th board of stewards meeting August 22nd. 
Women of Wesley are, uh, this looks like an old one. Book study starting Tuesday, July 18th in the parlor. Uh, but you are, um, I'm sure you can still join that. For more information, contact Pam Burris at pamkburris at gmail.com. Okay, now, you may think that that's a lot of announcements, but you have to understand that's kind of a tip of the iceberg. We have so much going on in this church, so many missions, ministries, fellowship opportunities. It's such an amazing church. Many of you know that, and some of you will learn that, that soon. But that's what's going on at Wesley. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, everyone. If you would please stand.
stand. You may be seated. As we continue in the presence of the Lord, um, I just want to let some of you know who may not know that today is Wesley's birthday. Uh, Wesley Methodist Church was founded in, on August 6, 1956. And so we just want to remember uh, those generations who've gone before us. And uh, some of you are here like me because of those generations. Uh, some of our generations continue. I'm looking out at Cindy. And she's one, Cindy Minter, is one who has generations with her. I happen to be blessed to have my daughter here who is also uh, one of the next generations. So um, let's give glory and thanks to God as we continue in his presence. Good morning, Father. It is such a privilege to be here today in your house and in your presence. There's no place we'd rather be than right here with you and with this body of believers. God, we thank you for Jesus, for what he did on the cross, and for the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And today we feel the power of that spirit as we gather in this room. We give you thanks and praise for who you are. We call you sovereign, redeemer, forgiver, healer, provider. God, you're our all in all. And we are so thankful for what you've done and for who you are. Today, Father, we look ahead to Promotion Sunday for those kids here in this church. And as we do, we pray that we would be reminded that the best promotion we could have is to be promoted by you. Lord, let us always remember that being in your service and in your kingdom under your authority is the best promotion that we can have. So thank you that you go with us as you send us into a school year for school staff, for students, for all who are impacted by schools. Lord, we give you thanks and praise that your presence is with us wherever we go. Today, Lord, we confess that we don't always turn to you As a matter of fact, sometimes we turn to you last instead of first. Only when we're desperate and we ask for your forgiveness. We confess that we don't always read your word, that we don't always love others, especially not the way you love them. We confess that we try to do things in our own power instead of your power. Thank you that you forgive us. We pray for clean hearts and clean hands so that we might be righteous before you. Today, Lord, we give you our true selves, who we are with all our faults and our flaws, and we surrender to you. And we pray that you would guide us and lead us into a new life. Today, Lord, we also lift to you those who are sick. And there are those among us, Lord, right now and in this place who need your healing. God, we lift Hal to you, who's right here in your presence. we declare his healing and the power of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that through you, miracles happen. 
We thank you that through you, we have hope. For all those on our hearts who need healing, Lord, we silently name them to you. You're the God who heals. God, for those of us who are lost, who don't know you, who are hungry for you, who've turned our backs on you. God, we pray that you would heal us too. Lead us into your presence that we would know you more. And Father, for those of us who have concerns and worries that are beyond our control, you know our hearts, you know our thoughts, but your ways and your thoughts are higher than ours. And so we leave this place trusting in you with our futures, with our worries, whatever our concerns are. You told us to cast them all on you, and so we do that now. And Father, as we finish this worship service, we pray that it's pleasing in your sight as we sing your praises and we give you glory as we open our hearts to your word. Let all honor and glory and praise be yours. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now if you'll receive this offering of music as we're mindful of our giving back to God.
Amen, indeed. What a, what a talented uh, group we have here today. And we have a congregation with, uh, that is talented musically, which is the opposite of what I am. God gave me some other gifts and graces, but uh, music wasn't one of them. Well, we are, um, I just felt that this was a good topic to preach on today. I think many of us in our Christian walk get stuck. And we're going to look to the author of Hebrews, and I say the author of Hebrews because we don't know who, who wrote Hebrews. But we know that ultimately the Holy Spirit was the author and he wanted us to have this letter. So uh, we are not going to stand today um, because this is not a gospel reading. Uh, <laughs> unless you want to, but no, there's, there's only two verses here. This is the beginning of chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, this is your time. I ask that you speak through me. And in spite of me today, Lord, Holy Spirit, I need your anointing so that this sermon will touch the hearts of your hearers. We thank you for blessing this time. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, if you're like me, from time to time you get stuck in a spiritual drought. Or maybe you get arrested in your development, so to speak. Or, or maybe you just feel that you haven't taken the necessary steps forward that you should have taken in your walk with Jesus. You know, I think that all of us have either been there or are there or will be there or know somebody who is there and when we get in those droughts, it's because we have taken our eyes off of Jesus. Now, I was driving in Texarkana on March 17th of this year. It was rainy. It was the first day of the NCAA tournament. And I was keeping, I was looking at the scores on my phone, but didn't get any accidents. Then when I got into this not so good area of Texarkana, I, I looked down for one second, not to look at the scores, not to look at the scores, to look at where I was going. One second. And in that one second, my car, it was my car, it had nothing to do with me, my car... <laughs> my car collided with a concrete barrier and the side was all scraped up and the airbags deployed and all of a sudden if you want to talk about stuck i was stuck without a vehicle for three months well my vehicle for three months i had to drive my mom's dorky car around but anyways <laughs> anyways I, I thank you, Mom, for letting me have those wheels. But one second, just one second, I took my eye off, and, and I mean, it was, it was literally like, like this. And, um, and that's what happens. It could just be a day or two. We take our eye off Jesus, and we are headed towards a drought. We are, we are headed towards stuckness. And, you know, it, 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 it is... It's understandable, right? It doesn't mean we're bad Christians. It doesn't mean we don't love Jesus. But our days are filled with busyness and stress and meetings and taking kids places and, and, and adulting and all the stuff that comes with it and, and, and different things that are grabbing at our attention. 
and, and all of a sudden a day, two, three, a week's gone by and we haven't opened our Bible. We've taken our eye off Jesus. Now what's interesting here is that the author of Hebrews, uh, before we get to chapter 12, and in chapter 11, he talks about heroes of the faith. He talk, This is the hall of faith chapter. And he talks about these witnesses. And these people have run the race of endurance. Because when you sign up to be a Christian, when you place your trust in Jesus Christ, you are now in a race. But this race has nothing to do with speed. Speed is not a component of this race. This race is truly one of endurance. And so the author of Hebrews talks about people that you should be familiar with. Jacob, Joseph, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Noah, to name a few. These are folks who have run the race. And, and as Sheila mentioned, August 6, 1956, 67 years ago, this church was born. You think of all those who have run the race to the ultimate prize of getting home in the arms of Jesus. And so he says... Therefore, and this is the beginning of chapter 12, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, now that's, those aren't spectators, those are the folks that he's talking about in chapter 11. He says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. He's saying, throw off anything that hinders us, right? So I know for me, one of the things that will, will keep me from reading the Bible sometimes is I'll say, well, let me just check ESPN.com. Half hour goes by. Now I'm tired. Now I don't want to read the Bible. So we have to throw off everything. And then he talks about the sin that entangles us. Remember, friends, when you place your trust in Christ, you are now free from the power of sin. You are now free from the ultimate penalty of sin. So you can throw off the sin that in, ensnares and entangles you. He says, let us run with perseverance the race marked before us. And then the key words. Now, some versions say, look unto Jesus. But I like the NIV because it says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's how you run the race. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He is the inventor and author and pioneer of our faith. He is the finisher of our faith or the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's the power position right there, the right hand of the, of the hand of God. And so he endured the cross, but it says, for the joy set before him, he knew, he, he knew the joy that it was to do what he did for us. You know... <laughs> if you look at, 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 the, at the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, this is, it's extraordinary on so many levels, but he endured so much. And, and, and we've, you know, particularly those last few days. But he loved you and loves you so much that he became your sin on the cross. And you have to understand, this is a man fully human and fully divine. And some people say, well, do you think maybe his divinity allowed him not to feel all of that pain? And I think it's just the opposite. I think his divinity allowed him to stay alive to really, to really feel each and every piece of pain. 
And this is how serious God takes sin. But he endured so much on the cross and he bled and suffocated to death and poured out that blood. Remember, that's the currency that God uses to cleanse sin is blood. And he poured out a blood that was special because this blood had no sin in it. It was clean, sinless, stainless, pure blood that covered your debts, my debts, and the wages that we owe God for sins of our past and sins of our present and sins of our future. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So how does this now get us unstuck? Because we know life is hard and you throw Christianity into there and it makes it harder. It makes it harder because the world is against Christianity. Now, in this country, we haven't suffered persecution like they have in other countries. But uh, it's probably coming, probably coming at some point, not to be Drew Downer up here. Well, how do we get unstuck so that we can keep our eyes focused on Christ. Because when we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, when we focus our eyes on Him, we can get unstuck. And there are four ways, there are four ways that we have to, we have to pay attention to to get unstuck. Four ways. Now these aren't, I'm not going to go into great detail, so don't think, you know, there's 20 minutes left of this, ser this sermon. But um, there's four ways, and I don't like having four points in a sermon because I think that's too much. But, but most of these are self-explanatory. But there's four things we have to do if we're going to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And the first one is we have to saturate our minds in the Word of God. Now, there's nothing wise or special about what I just said there, right? I mean, oh, okay, Pastor, that's great. Saturate our minds in the Word of God. But we must do that because you know that it's not the only way God speaks to us, but it is the primary way. The Bible also holds the history of, the, of, of what we need to know, the history of the world and how we came to be and what God thinks of us and how to get salvation, how to receive salvation, it's everything we need. And when we read it with the Holy Spirit, He speaks to us. We may read this same passage five times and it doesn't change its meaning, but God will use that to speak to us. And so really, I'm going to tell you, you're either in the Word or in the world. It's really almost that simple, right? We're either in the Word or in the world. And we've all been there, at least most of us have. I've been where I haven't been in the Word like I should have been. Especially when you move to, you know, 280 miles and um, you're getting settled in and you have excuses. You have built-in excuses. They're great excuses. Well, God, I, I just moved, you know. Just I'll get to your... I'll get to this next. I already know a lot of that. You know, you start to come up with excuses, but we must saturate our minds in the Word of God daily. It should be as much uh, a part of our day as showering, brushing our teeth, and all the other things that we do every single day. Because the more you read the Bible, the more you will start throwing off everything that hinders and entangles us as the author of Hebrews says. Because when you saturate your mind in the Word, you, you will develop a biblical worldview. And when you develop a biblical worldview, life will start to make sense to a degree. There's still senseless things, right? But it... But, but you'll have a biblical worldview, and we, every Christian needs a biblical worldview. But that's the first thing. We have to saturate our minds in the Word of God. There's no substitute for that either. The second thing we must do, and this is very self-explanatory, is we must talk to God. We must develop a prayer life. A pr we must develop a prayer, um, a prayer life. And prayer is just talking to God. That's all it is. Usually I like to start with praises and forgiveness and then you go into petitions and then you listen. And, and, and so it's very important to communicate with the Lord. And 
And then, so that's the second thing. And then the third thing is, see, I told you, we're going to get through these fast. We're going to get through these fast. Uh, the third thing is, is that we must know that all good things come from above. All good things come from God. And, and, and two of the most precious things is, is joy and peace. Everybody wants joy and peace. The world will offer you joy and peace in different areas, but it's always a cheap knockoff, and it is always fleeting. It never lasts, and it's never as sweet as the peace and joy found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All good things come from above. And the fourth and final thing is we have to be realists about this world. Yes, there's beauty in this world. Yes, there are beautiful things in nature. Yes, there are good moments. Yes, there are days that we feel great. But you know what? This world is growing darker. This world is a sin-filled place. And as we read the Bible, you will develop a biblical worldview. And a biblical worldview shows you clearly what this is. And this is a world that's largely governed by our enemy, our adversary. And so we have to know that. We, we just have to know what this world is. This world is growing darker. Now, the good thing about darkness is our light will shine brighter. So the light of Christ will shine brighter in darkness. I have a little night light in my bathroom and it's on all the time, I guess, but it only shows up when it's dark in there, right? It only comes on or whatever. I don't know how it works, but anyways, it's there, right? So, um, so, so, so it's there and that's how this is. That's how this is. We are living in a dark world, but it's okay. It's okay because our light will, will grow. But, but we need to recognize what the world is. And I, I feel bad saying this in front of young people because, you know, it, it, when I was young, I thought the world was a wonderful place and everybody was good. And, oh, yeah, the world's for me. But when we develop a biblical worldview, we understand what the world is. And so when we combine these four things together, when we combine these four things together, saturating our mind with the Word of God, when we develop a consistent prayer life, when we know that all good things come from above, and when we realize what the world is, we are now in a strong position to not just look at Jesus, but fix our eyes on Him. And you do this, I promise you, you will get unstuck. You will move forward in your relationship with Jesus Christ. So we can all live out that famous hymn of Helen Lamel, which if I was really thinking, I would have had somebody up here singing this. And I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to, because it's a real embarrassment if I sing it. But we all know this song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And that's the thing. When we start focusing on Jesus, when we get in the word and do these things, the shiny luster of whatever is grabbing our attention in the world begins to fade. And that's the goal. Because we want to be in the world and not of the world. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us wherever we are. Everyone in here, Lord, is at a different place in their, their journey with you on this race of endurance. There's no speed involved. It's all just a race of endurance. Lord, help us to, to saturate our minds with your word and to develop a consistent prayer life if we don't have one already and to realize that all good things come from you and to realize what the world really is so that we can start, start to get unstuck 
We thank you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Today is a special day because we get to sup at the Lord's table. And all who are here are welcome. We practice an open table here. And we are going to change the liturgy a little bit, um, which should be on the screen there. Friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another now. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, friends. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies of God. He died for us. That absolutely proves God's love toward you and me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took the bread and broke the bread and gave it to His disciples and take, said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. When the supper was over, He took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, Father, we offer ourselves today in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His precious sinless blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we get to feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will those who are assisting please come forward. For gluten-free option, just point at your server and they will provide that for you.
as Bishop Hayes from Oklahoma says, supper's ready.
right, looks like it's our turn again. <laughs> All right, if you would, let's stand as we sing our next song. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful time this is to worship with you and to worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, go forth fixing your eyes on Jesus. Amen. My